Hunt Suburbia podcast presents the Living Legends series. A special three-part series with deer hunting legend Lanny Benoit. What's one of your uh, favorite stories about your dad that you remember? Or hunting with him or... Well, we've had a lot of good stuff times together, my dad and I. When I was a kid, see, I never could sit, I always fell asleep. <laughs> so he says to me, I'm going to take you up on Jay Peak up there, and there's a little notch up there, and I'm going to set you down in that notch. And I'm going to go out way up high, and I'm going to kick that buck off in there, because he goes up there every day. And he's going to run through that notch, and you're going to shoot him. Great, Pop, that sounds awesome. <laughs> well, I go up, he says to me, I'm going to sit right here. So I'm sitting right there, it was a sunny day, and next thing I know, he's yelling at me. I fell asleep. <laughs> about a half hour later or more, he comes back and I'm sleeping. And there the buck tracks are going right by where I was sitting. <laughs> Never saw the deer. Can't expect a little guy to not fall asleep. Sounds like, uh, almost almost like you're, you and your friend Bernie there. Yeah. That's like... Uh, I had the right plan. It's like... Tom Blaze and I, he goes, we should sit here for a while. I go, okay. I said, now listen, I got to warn you. I fall asleep when I sit down. Yeah, I know. So I fell asleep and I woke up and he's sleeping. I just tell him this ain't working out. We're both sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been 10. Hey, where's my Bud Light? <laughs> you want one? Yeah, I'm getting yeah. thirsty. The Wabat Blue, Canadian beer. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Said, hey, halfway through. Oh no, we're only halfway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you a story about the suburban. Not suburban, I had a wagon here. Thank you for the beer. Yep, you're welcome. So we're up in Maine and we're going down this long straightaway. I look way down the end of the straightaway and there's this guy doing this. What the hell does he want? So I go down and he says, Oh, you can't cross the bridge. Why not? He's all rotted. You, you go through. He said, I started to go across and started to fall through over the truck. I got out and looked at it. And I said to my dad and Shane and one of the guys, says, you guys riding or are you watching? What do you mean? I said, we're going across the bridge. <laughs> you can't go across the bridge. I said, you watching or are you riding? <laughs> oh, we, what are you talking about? I said, never mind. I went down the road about 300 yards. I came up through there and never touched the fucking bridge. <laughs> I got to doing about 80. Wing, wow. The old Suburban, huh? <laughs> no, I was a Wagoneer. Oh, a Wagoneer. I did the Dukes at Hazard because it had a little ramp to it. Yeah. So we came back at night. I said, you guys riding and watching? Oh, we want to ride. That looked like it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a little excitement. You know? Oh, yeah, you do. So you've got, uh, you still, you see you're still driving a Suburban. It's not the uh, Casper, right? The white, or was Casper the Wagoneer? Casper's a white suburban. Casper right? was, uh, well, we had Big Red. Yeah. We had Big Blue. And then we had Casper. We had two Caspers. And then we had, uh, God, I can't remember the other name. Buster. I think it was Buster. Doc named that one. I said, Doc, we're going to name this, this suburban. Uh, I want to call it Buster. I said, okay. So you gotta name them. But the Suburbans are, uh, why do you prefer Suburbans over pickup trucks? Well, let me tell you something. I've had every four wheel drive known to man to go hunting with, and I ended up with Suburbans. They seem to be the best. You can shoot a deer and throw it in the back, nobody knows you got a deer. Yeah. If you got a pickup truck, if you don't have a cap on it, they all see the deer. Um, you can put everything in the back of that Suburban plus the deer, and even put a kitchen sink in there. Yeah, so you could probably even use it as a bedroom if you need to. You can, I've done that before. <laughs> Taking the ones with the doors, take flip the doors open, put some logs across there, and drape a blanket down, and now you got a nice little spot in there you will camp out in. Yeah. But you can put everything back there, chainsaws, um, pump jacks, um, all kinds of tools. Um, plus they'll throw your deer in. Plus they got unbelievable traction. Yeah. You can go places in two wheel with those where a pickup truck has to use it for a drive. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've had Scouts, Broncos, Blazers, Wagoneers, 
regular trucks. I end up with a Suburban way back, and I, I, ever since then I've had a Suburban. Yeah. They ride nice all day. They ride good, you know, you don't get beat up four wheeling with them. You can go places that you don't even realize you can go, so. And you don't get beat. Yeah. Yeah, I guess everyone's got their preference on. Uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm thinking about getting a pickup truck next year. Um, pickup truck, you go places, you know, just whatever you prefer. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You a uh, big snowmobiler too, right? Yeah, I raced for Bombardier, I raced for Yamaha, and I raced for Articat for a little while. And I read you, you're, you know, not that I would know, I don't know much about snowmobiling, but you were as well known in snowmobiling circles as, as deer hunting. So there's got to be something in you that, you know, determination or something, right, that you, you want to get, you, you take a, take to something you like and you keep going until you get to the top of it, right? What do you think it is? Yeah, I know exactly what it is, and I was born with that. It's not something you, uh, I don't think you can require, acquire it. I think you have to be born with it. Um, I don't know how to explain that. But what is it? Is it determination or? Yeah, it's, uh, you're not going to give up. Like uh, snowmobile racing. I grew up dreaming about deer hunting, and I grew, I grew up dreaming about uh, snowmobile racing. I wanted to be sponsored by manufacturers. Um, I wanted to win a lot of big races, and it all come true. Um, well, just for instance, I'm from Vermont. Now, who the hell from Vermont? Where is Vermont? I went out <laughs> Wisconsin and. Um, I entered four classes, I won two of them, got two seconds for racing for Bombardier. It's the first time I was ever out to that spot. Well, in 82, I went to Michigan. I entered uh, three classes, won all three of those at the World Series. <laughs> um, the first year I went to the World, the World Championships, which is different than the World Series. Like I say, I got two seconds, two firsts. The next year I won all four of my classes. Wow. So, in two years at the World Championships, I entered eight classes, won six of them, got two seconds. <laughs> Who the hell has done that from the East? Nobody. And, and of course, you know, the first year, I got two first, two seconds, a big shot from Bombardier come along in the barn, dragged me over to the bartender and says, whatever this guy wants tonight, <laughs> it's on us. I don't care what he does. Yeah. Oh. Me? Okay. <laughs> After he left, come on, fellas. <laughs> Buying stuff for people I didn't even know. Well, that's the perks of a sponsorship right there, right? But I won about 850 oval races. One time I got all done oval racing. That's an awful lot. And then I went drag racing. I won, I don't know how many drag races, probably six, seven hundred drag races, I designed my own carburetors, mm. designed two guns, designed all the clutch springs for Bombardier, uh, they copied a lot of my stuff for the trail sleds, the uh, list goes on and on. Yeah, that's um, great. Um, I wanted to be of the state champ in skeet shooting, I don't know how many times I won that, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, I don't know. So, um, I got lucky and I'm a decent shot at shooting skeet. Longest run I got, I think it's uh, 449 before I missed one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I don't like you about... Have, you have to change the barrel before the... Before no. The... <laughs> Listen, the only thing I don't like about deer hunting, I never learned how to twirl my gun before I shoot the deer. <laughs> you know, it took too long. <laughs> if I could do it with a pistol, be, I could look like... Uh, you know, John Wayne or Clint Eastwood twirl it and go <laughs> But out of all those things, deer hunting is your favorite, right? What was your biggest passion in life, you think, or what? Snowmobile racing was right up there for me. Yeah. Because I did stuff in snowmobile racing that, that people had never done. Like I went to the World Championships the first year, or maybe it was the second year, anyway, it don't matter. I entered Mod 2. 
with a stock snowmobile, and I won it. Went against all the mod sleds. I have a stock snowmobile. Now I come back from the World Championships and I'm racing in Ontario the rest of the winter, and they have a mod two up there. Won all the finals with a stock snowmobile. Beat all the mud sleds. The last race I was in, the mud guys protested me. <laughs> <laughs> He's using performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> what's, what's up with this? Well, they're pulling me on the straightaways. What happened was I was just out handling them in the corners. Hmm. But I, you know, I know where this is a deer hunting thing, but that was a lot of fun. You know, um, Bombardier took, called me up to the office one time and they had Captain Flash suit. You know, Captain Flash suit all made for me, you know, because the Frenchmen like to get all dirtied up. <laughs> I looked at that and I said, I ain't wearing that. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm your boss. you got to wear it. I said, no, I ain't wearing it. <laughs> I refuse to wear this suit. Is that thing wool? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a different suit I'll wear. It. Not that one. I'm not getting all dirtied up. So they had a special meeting on me. They were trying to name you Captain Flash? No, but <laughs> that's what it would have looked like. So... They said, well, Chester was my boss, and he said, well, listen, higher-ups want you to look fancy. I said, well, I'm not wearing it. Lanny the Lightning. <laughs> yeah, so they had a special meeting on me, and they talked to the higher-ups. Have you guys seen this guy race snowmobiles? No. Well, come to the races, and then you tell us what you think, because here's what's going to happen. We get rid of him. He's going to go race for somebody else, and we don't want that. <laughs> He's winning races for us. So we got to leave him alone. So anyway, so they finally I got my way, I didn't have to wear the suit. So now meanwhile, they're gonna, I'm supposed to go to Alberta racing. <laughs> so they call me up and I go up there and well, we got a ticket for you. We're gonna fly to Alberta and we're gonna truck the sleds out. And I said, okay. I said, but you're missing a ticket. I think my wife wants to go. Well, okay, we'll get her a ticket. So now we fly all the way to Alberta and we get off the plane. And I says to Marcel, I says, of course everybody's Marcel up there. <laughs> I said, Marcel, where are you going? I'm going to go get a car. I'm going to rent one. Now, listen, my wife looks pretty cool. She looks pretty nice with that fur coat on. Don't come back with a little dinky car. <laughs> <laughs> so they come back with the biggest Lincoln they could find back then. The Lincolns are big ones. They come back, it's going to be this big enough. And we only got one more request. You got to open the door for her. Okay. <laughs> so let's see, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, that's good. Now you said one of the fellows you took hunting was named Bombardier. Is no. Uh, yes, he works for some. In, he works in Vermont here. Said uh, some. I don't know. He's one of those phone listener guys. Yeah, yeah. For the government, I think. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're but, listening right now. They're listening to you and I talk right now. Are they? They're like, Lanny said something about back in the fifties. They might have taken a few extra deer in the fifties. <laughs> Take me to jail. Yeah, and they ain't listening. That's the way it was back then. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, but there's some of the best stories I heard out of our deer camp in Vermont, you know, was yeah. those old guys. And they were all, they were government guys from D.C. that came up to our camp and, you know, moved. My, my grandfather settled, you know, up here. And, yeah, you know, they would go out at night and right down to the field and get one for camp, camp meet. That was a big thing way back in the 50s. Yeah. Um, uh, even in the 60s, some uh, was camp meet. Who was going to get the camp meet today? So yeah. they always tried to get a load of one and bump them off. And... Yep. How do you, uh, what do you, how do you like your venison? So you shoot a lot of big bucks. You find they taste. Uh... Well, we should talk about that because I've shot some that weren't fit to eat. Then I've shot some that were just awesome, they are great. One, for instance, um, I shot one at Jay Peak a long time ago. A deer weighed 235, he was fatter, and looked like he was raised on a farm. <laughs> uh, you could smell that deer meat uh, when my dad was cooking it. It was just horrible. And I think it was it had a lot to do with the way the deer died. He didn't, he didn't die well. I couldn't get a decent shot. I was shooting through brush and... <laughs> Yeah, you hear that stress does it to, does yeah. something to them. God, that deer was bad. But then you shoot another big one and everything's fine. Yeah. I wonder if you sneak up on them and they don't know you're there and it's all over right away. Those ones probably taste better. I think they do. Yeah. yeah. But some of those, whew. 
Uh, the deer in Ontario weren't too bad. Uh, they were pretty good. A lot of them fed a lot on blueberry brush and stuff, and um, they weren't bad. And you like uh, steaks, and you prefer steak. A lot of guys will just grind everything up into a burger, or sausage, or some will like. You know, I like steaks personally. I like my steaks thin, uh, and I don't mind grinding them up. Some parts of the deer, I don't want to grind up the good parts, but the for sure, you yeah. know, like a neck and stuff, grind that up, throw some pork in there, and whatever. Yeah. Uh, the way I really like the sausage is you put it in a pan and you. Uh, Throw a bunch of onions and green peppers in there after a while, and you dump a can of beer in there. Yeah. You know, in a frying pan? Yeah. Boy, does that come out good. I wish I had some right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got some sausage in there. <laughs> yeah, but it ain't the same. <laughs> well, maybe. I don't maybe I have your sausage, sausage, but... Miles yeah. Mountain. So when Shane comes up, does he just go hunting on his own the last few years, or are you guys trying to meet up and go? He went to Maine. I didn't get a chance to go to Maine because I was busy on this project. Yep. And like I say, I think this year I'm going to be able to go to Maine. But first off, I'm on check on that big buck in Vermont. Yeah. And if you want to come up and spend a few days with me, I'd be glad to have you. Yeah, okay. If you want to do that. Yeah. Um, See if we can line it up. I would love to. But that was uh, that's a really nice buck. A lot of people, are, you know, think that you can't really track in Vermont. You know, but the green, the green mountain, the whole spine, all the way up the middle there, you know, that's all you can track anywhere there. Well, listen, up there, that for us hunting, you could track. I never saw a man track in the woods. So he went in the woods. They just went, Whoop, lean up against a tree. <laughs> yeah, you said something about it. you saw that some guy was coming out. What was that? Came, you know, came out on the track last year and. Well, no, he was just up his bare ground. He just walked up in there. I, I went up in there after the next day. Um, I see where he was standing. It wasn't that far. He was like 200 yards from the landing. He, just, he, he don't track. He just There was a big buck, and you're like, you're not going to get on that? And he said, no, I'm, I'm done. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, it was bare ground. He saw him, but he wasn't coming back hunting there. Yeah. Oh, I don't understand that. If you see a buck that you think is a buck of you, one of the biggest bucks you've ever seen, then I'd be hunting that. Yeah, why? Well, why leave it? But he it. didn't come back for. He didn't even come back hunting that he, anywhere's in that area for a week. I don't know if he was busy or what. And that's the same buck you're talking about. Now, yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I asked him, I said, "Go back. I've been up there in a week." He said, "But no, I'm not going back over there." Okay. But you never seen this buck? You just saw his, his track. I saw the last day I saw one antler of it come out yep. like this. Yeah. And he would come out from behind a big boulder. If he'd have ran this way, I, I would have been able to go Kapowie. They <laughs> ran that way, of course. Um, and when he turned, I, the rock was up kind of high, and I saw this one antler come out. And I go, well, oh, just come on, go over here. <laughs> no. Yeah, I think Vermont's an under underlooked state for track, and everybody wants to go up to, of course, see this bigger territory and country up in Maine and Ontario, but there's places to do it if you want to find a place in Vermont, right? Absolutely. This mild mountain where I was hunting, that's some big country there. Victory Bog, that's just the other side of Miles Mountain, down yeah. this way. Mine's over here. And then you got this whole big range there. There's a lot of woods there. Yeah. And some some two hundred pounders, right? There's there absolutely, is some decent bucks in there. Not a lot of them like they used to be, but there's yeah. some big bucks. Yeah. I found two there last year that were good ones. Does it feel always feel a little better when you get a big Vermont buck as opposed to the other places because you grew up there? Yeah, I haven't shot a big buck in Vermont for years, so I haven't hunted there for a long time. Well, you know. Just to show you how much confidence I used to have, I was doing a seminar in Vermont, and, and somebody, a couple people asked me about New Hampshire. Man, have you shot any big bucks in New Hampshire? I said, no, I haven't. I haven't hunted there. And once in a while, I'll go over for a day or something, but I haven't hunted there much. And I said to the crowd, there was probably 300 people there, maybe 400. I said to them, well, listen, if you want to come back next year to the seminar, I'll show you what I'm going to shoot. How's that? 
This is the, I'm going to show you the buck that I'm going to shoot next year. I haven't seen him yet, but I'm going to shoot one. <laughs> this is the way I can go to New Hampshire and shoot a buck. Yeah. So afterwards, Lane goes, boy, that's pretty ballsy to say that. I said, well, you can get a look at it too if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had, uh, had a writer with me. I didn't have a camera guy. But I had a guy pay to come out to watch me go hunt a big buck. He was a writer? No, we had a writer. Yeah, uh, yeah. The guy that wrote this book was there. Yeah, Bryce. I found his track at 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock the day before. Yeah. Another one of these deals. Here's the buck track crossing the road. We're driving along in the suburban. You're going to start, you're going to track him today? No, nope. come back tomorrow. I'll go try to get this buck tomorrow. It's a pretty good buck. So Towsy was there, and there was a guy that paid to go hunting with us because he wanted to. He was a little doubtful on his tracking thing. <laughs> so he was there to, through the whole thing. He wasn't in the woods with me, but he was there when I was crossing roads with the deer, making a big swing. Was he just one of the, he just like reached out and was like, look, I want to come and I'm going to pay you? <laughs> yeah, he just wanted to see how it was done. Yeah, yeah. So I shot that deer at about 12, 31 o'clock. And I radioed up and said, I got him, I'm over here. And he was one of the guys that showed up. And, yep, now I've seen, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and then next year you went back to that show and uh, brought brought the New Hampshire buck? Yeah, I brought the head. There it is. <laughs> I'll take a look. <laughs> it's pretty ballsy, ain't it? I have that's to good. apologize for that, but... Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but it's not bragging if you can do it. <laughs> so Lane was pretty reserved, huh? Was he more reserved? What do you mean reserved? I don't know. It sounded like he was like, well, that's pretty ballsy, you know. I wouldn't make a claim like that. Mm -hmm. Was he just kind of... Oh, yeah. Well, he didn't have the confidence either, so... Yeah. All I know is back then, if we had snow and there was any big bucks around, one of them was coming home with me. Yeah. I'm going to give him a new... I'm going to make him famous. <laughs> <laughs> how many How many deer have you killed? I ain't you... telling. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't hear me. <laughs> Most of them over 200 pounds, though, huh? Except for them, you know, when you were a kid. Something about that number, the 200 pounds. And it's all it's all fully dressed, right? All the organs out or... Yep. Yep. Keep the balls on, though, because they add a couple pounds, right? Well, no, you, keep, you don't <laughs> cut those off because you're going to drag the deer out. And if you're going to hang it up, uh, you don't expose that meat right there. You just make as small as a cut as you can make yeah. to start with. Yeah. And then after a while, you split them down and and clean them out in a little better and salt it up. But if you expose this part, and you're going to hang it for two or three days before you go home, a lot it's of that meat you're going to have to peel off and throw away. Yeah. That's why you leave that on there. Hmm. You yeah. should take the piss sack out. Yeah. In the woods. Yeah. You probably got pretty good at gutting deer quickly over the yeah, over the really years. Good, yeah. yeah, yeah, it doesn't take long. You ever spent the night in the woods? Had had to for any reason, or you you made it out every night? No, I never scared of the woods, but no, never spent a night in the woods. Yeah, only if I wanted to. When I was a kid, when I grew up, I used to spend a lot of time, and a lot of times I wouldn't come home for two days. Yeah, I'd tell my parents, um. Gonna go fishing. I'm gonna eat my fish, and I ain't coming back for a day or two <laughs> days. And I'd go. What would they say to that? It was okay. Yeah. I used to build a lean-to out of what was in the woods. I didn't have no saws or nothing. Didn't matter if it rained. I didn't get wet either. Uh, I'd just make a nice lean-to. It's just knowing how to do it. You guys have Iroquois blood, blood, right? Yeah, I have a certain amount, I guess. If probably if I did, I did a DNA or whatever they call it, I'd, I'd have something there. Although I am blue-eyed, I've uh, got blonde hair, <laughs> but uh, it's still there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But I remember yeah. seeing those people when I was a young fellow. Mm -hmm. They were definitely, you know, they were definitely uh, some kind of Indians. Yeah. I used to look at them and go, wow. <laughs> I don't look quite, that's different. <laughs> Not that I was, you know, yeah. Racist or anything, but yeah. Well, growing up in Vermont, it's you know mostly white people everywhere. Yeah, my dad was pretty proud of that heritage he had, and he yeah. used to do a lot of stuff. Uh, um, 
like he always had a deer ear on his gun yeah and stuff like that you know and then he'd have a, a scent scent thing on his gun from the hawk and yeah because the the iroquois used to put a, a deer ear on their bows right yeah yeah you guys never got into bow bow hunting or shooting bows or that's something i could see you getting into just shooting the bow I was a good shot with a bow because I hunted a lot when I was a kid with a bow. Yeah. But I never really got into deer hunting with a bow because here's the reason why. I got into bird hunting a lot. And bow season interfered with bird hunting. So I used to love to bird hunt. Yeah. And that, that was getting me in shape for deer hunting too yeah. because yeah. I'd run from apple tree to apple tree in Duxbury because I knew where all the apple trees were. So... We bird hunted right up into the 80s, um, a little bit in the 90s, and then I kind of quit doing that because the birds went downhill. Partridge or yeah. pheasant? Yeah. yeah, partridge. They kind of took a dive, and I felt guilty shooting them, so I used to give them to the neighbors and cook them myself, and they are pretty good. Yeah, well, the deer population seems to be doing okay, population-wise, right? At least down, down where we hunt in Vermont, there's a... Seems to be quite a few deer around lately. Never seen a candle thing like that. Oh yeah, pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. My dad likes all those antiques. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lanny, I really appreciate you coming along. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. We should tell. We should tell people. We're so I was originally calling Lanny because I was on the way up here. We're at a lake house here and. I was coming up for the 4th of July weekend. I was like, well, I can pull off 89 and stop in where, where your house is, and we can just do it there. And uh, Lanny's like, oh, I've, I'm going up, you know, to Lake Champlain, too. And we come to find out we're only two or three miles away from each other up here. We might as well do it up here. Probably two miles. We went <laughs> far. I'm just a, oh, that reminds me. Saturday night, if you want to come over, we're going to have a little... Something to eat over there and some little bit of fireworks. Oh, yeah? Bring your dad, too. I don't care. You can bring the girlfriend, even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll let she him just, know. That's she doesn't a... have to stay here, you know, clean the house. <laughs> what time? Uh, I don't know yet, but I'll stop back and let you know. All right. I would say... Oh, well, it depends on how much you want to bullshit. Well, well fireworks, you need you need it to be a little dark, right? Yeah, yeah. but I mean, if you stopped over at four, three, five, six. And that way there should be some food left and you can have something to eat and I'll have some uh, some beer around. Yeah. Uh, Mikey that went deer hunting with me, you would laugh. Guy's got a camp right down here. <laughs> right by that, where they launched the boat. Yep. Just that little camp he sits up like there. He sits on the porch there. Well, I took him deer hunting with me last year. He never deer hunted like that before. Tracking? You took him tracking? Yeah, well, he ain't going to track nothing. <laughs> he don't dare to go in the woods too far. He's afraid he'll fall down and hurt himself. So I, I said to him, go in this swamp right here. See, he should have gone with me that one day, and he didn't do that. Boy, I did went right through there, too. So he, I said, you know, you should go down that little swamp right there, because he don't dare to go very far. He didn't go in that swamp more than, I don't know, 100 yards, maybe 150 yards, got lost. You can get turned around in the swamp if you don't know. What you can do? Snowing out. Yeah. No sun. Couldn't tell. The sun's a compass anyway, so it's out, but it weren't out. So I call him. I say, hey, Mikey, we're gonna go somewhere else. I can't get out of here. I follow the brook back. <laughs> well, now I can't even find the fucking brook. <laughs> <laughs> this is all for crying it's out loud. It's snowing, out. right? He yeah. Can backtrack his own track. He's like going around circles. <laughs> I said, all right, listen to me. I'm going to pull out right where you basically went in. I'm going to shoot my pistol off. So I touch a couple of, oh, I'm all set now. That's a good. Because you couldn't hear me honk the horn. Because you can't hear either. But well, he's up here and you took him You took him somewhere else hunting or where you guys staying around? Well, he lives, he's a neighbor of mine. Oh. We shoot oh, skeet oh, together. Oh, neighbor of yours down there. Yeah, he, he lives the same town. Okay. But him and I have been friends since the 60s. Yeah. we just never gone deer hunting. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so that, the other buck I tracked there, I tracked two bucks in that place. 
he come up through and the, the road is right here. And there's a clearing right here. And I told Mikey, I said, boy, you know, it snowed last night. You should come up there with me. And I said, I'll put you in that clearing there. And I wouldn't doubt that something's going to go through there because they've been crossing there. Well, sure enough. I get up there, I'm all by myself. Buck comes right through, comes out over here, walks across this little clearing. Yeah. Goes across the road, goes through another clearing, and then he went off that way. <laughs> That's right where I was going to put Mikey. So now... Both of those bucks went over the mountain, so I had to go around and find them. It took me a day to locate them over there. And there's a road that goes up on the top of that mountain, Skid Road. I said, now listen, both of them bucks crossed the top of that in the same place. If I get to tracking around, one of them's apt to cross that road up there. I said, so why don't you go right up there and hang out? So I call him in the morning about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and I say, hey, I got this big buck in front of me. The dog's chasing him. I said, make sure you hang tight. Yep. Well, when I jumped that buck out, and the antler, I saw the antler, and that buck headed for that fucking spot. So I called Mikey. I said, well, he's headed towards you. Well, I'm in the truck. I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> I'm having a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be able to, this is a tough thing, is sitting all day, and sitting, but. <laughs> You gotta be there, especially if if Lanny's telling you to sit there. Just be there. Oh fuck! <laughs> I said, you know the dog. You got a fucking whole war out dog fucking following that fucking deer around, and you go back to the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even go in the woods. He walked up the road and walked back. Well, that tuna fish sandwich. I said, take it with you next time. Yeah. <clears throat> Eat it there. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, I've shot a lot of bucks just driving down the road. Uh, Bernie Champney would be a good guy to interview. I'm driving down the road, and there goes a buck track across the road. Pretty good. Just get out and go, boom. Uh, I got another story to tell you, and then I'm going to go and have a few beers. <laughs> and we're leaving Maine. And I had this Mikey Condon from Burlington here, or Winooski. Mm -hmm. uh, he went hunting with me a couple years, and, and he, him and I shot a couple deer together. Or he shot them, I just pointed them out. So we're coming back from Maine and hadn't shot a deer. And I said, well, you know, you know, we're not out of Maine yet, Mike. If you want, I'll take a side road here. And if we can find a buck track, we can get you something to get back to. I said, I got some deer meat. Yeah. Well, all right. So we took a couple of side roads and there was a buck track going up the mountain. And it was two days old. Well, this is our last chance. It's about one o'clock, so we can't keep riding around. And I went up there and deer laid there, laid there, laid there, laid there. I jumped him up and I went boom and he went out and hit that logging road. I came up and headed right for the rig. Where was Bernie? I weren't Bernie, that was Mike Condon. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the deer ran right down. Oh, I'll fucking calm down. Just behind the rig. <laughs> well, that was nice of him. Yeah. He goes bang and puts his tag on it, and away we go. She's a nice job, Mike. <laughs> that was a good. Last day, huh? Was for him. Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. I was just going back home, then I was going back to Maine. Yeah. But you see, I've had a lot of luck just driving down the road, find a deer, try and get out and go shoot him, and get back in the rig and. Yeah, and even now, I, I would think you would only, you know, the ones crossing the road, you'd get out and shoot the freshest ones or follow the freshest ones, but that one was a couple of days old. And you, yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean by tracking. If you can't beat that, I've done that so many times. How many times have you followed one and then, uh, you know, might have been old, but you came in across another buck that was bedded down or something that wasn't the one that you were tracking, but just because it was bringing you into a nice buck territory. I did that in Maine up there on the, above the Golden Road. I'm driving down the road, had the van. Hold it, guys. I'm driving. It's my van. Slammed the brakes on. I saw that track cross the road going up a bank. I said, ah, right there. I'm following that deer. I, you're going to go look at the track? I don't need to. I said, that's a big buck right there. I said, you guys take the van, come back later on today, see if I'm around. So they take off my head up through there and I'm sneaking along, sneaking along behind that buck and look over and he's laying in his bed right through a bunch of brush. And I go, pow, and he goes, and he drifted <laughs> over the bank and he disappeared. 
Well, I get up, finally get over there, and I could see her. He finally got up and ran, ran off. I said, well, what the? He's bleeding pretty good. Then I go down, see him again, couldn't quite get a shot, but he's, he's, he's dinged up decent. In other words, you know, you're going to get him. So now we're going down through some spruces, and I look, and he's going broadside to me. I said, oh, pow. Whoop. So I go down there, big deer. There's some like 220 something, 230, 240, something like that in there. Big old bruiser. I go, wow, where the hell did I hit him when he was laying down? Couldn't find a mark on him. There's a satellite buck coming through. The, the second one was the satellite? Yeah. Yeah. Or it's the same buck. Yeah. So I got the deer out and I'm dragging it a little ways. I said, wait a minute, where the hell did I hit this deer? And I got really, I couldn't find it. So now I go back up and I see what happened. That other deer was still poking around because somebody went in there hunting. They're telling me how there was a buck in there bleeding off and on. I said, well, you should have tracked it. I hit that deer a few days before that. But nobody wanted to see him go back in there, so I should have gone and shot, this, shot him anyways. Put him out of his misery. <laughs> I don't think he was hurt that bad, yeah. but he was... You could have got him. Yeah. I'm sure he recovered. Yeah. Well, satellite, that's a good satellite buck. Yeah, that was a big old, big old bruiser. Yeah. The other one might have even been bigger. Who knows? I don't know. They're both big deer. Oh, look at that. Oh, well, hummingbirds, yeah. You got one of those feeders at your place? Though? I don't, but I should. Yeah, they're pretty fun. They'll, they'll come around all the time and... I love those little guys. You ever guys. seen one of those things as a baby? They're as big as your thumbnail. And they weigh like they weigh as much as a penny, I think. Probably not even much. Yeah. Well, buddy, I'm gonna get going if yep. you're all set. Yep. Thanks a lot for coming. That was great. Oh, this is second generation. This is the best book yep. right here. That's the second gen. Read that a few times. Yeah. This is a this is a really good book for information here. My dad knows Butch Towsley. Not, I asked him, I thought he knew Bryce, but he. Uh, my dad knows Butch pretty well. Bryce's uncle, who wrote that. Yeah, I don't seem to know him. What, Landon's still hunting? He does when he gets the chance to. Yeah. He seems like he's a really good hunter, too. And he in, is. In that book, he's got lots of... Yeah. That's a nice box. So you're still in Vermont? Landon, yeah, yeah works yeah. in my garage every day. Yep. Yeah. yeah, this is a really good book here, uh, I think, because it's got a lot of good information in it. Yeah, and a lot of great pictures in there, too. See, that's a big, that's a dark horn there. I said it. Dark <laughs> antlers. I saw that buck the night before, side the road, I think. I think it was the same one. And I sent Landon down to that big swamp down there where he shot that deer. And I, another guy brought him down there to put him in the right spot. And I said to him, now listen, when you get in this spot and you see a buck come out, make sure it's a big one. Don't be shooting the first buck you see. I said, I don't care if it's like this. Don't shoot that. Just wait. Because <clears throat> you're apt to see a bunch of bucks because there's a bunch of bucks down in there. And I said, so don't get anxious. So he's sitting there, and an eight-pointer comes out, and he's looking through the scope. No, nope, Dad said, don't shoot. Oh, there's <laughs> another one. Oh, don't shoot. He's going back and forth. Those disappeared, and all of a sudden, this thing came out. Oh, I'm going to shoot. Oh, that's a beauty. <laughs> that's, that's unmistakable you're shooting that one. It's got 14 and a half G2s on the fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> so he was sitting for that one, huh? You yeah. put him in a spot? Yeah. Ontario? Yeah. yeah. Well, we did that so the camera guy could get some footage. Fucking camera guy fucked up. <laughs> Ontario, I heard it was great for a while. It was. That book there had that book there had really flat feet. Is that your one of your books? Well, I finished that one off, but I found that one. I think this one. One of these I shot the day before, I think. One yep. of these. Yeah. I shot one of these the day before, but I knew that one was in there. That's a nice mount. That's a 
18 or 20 some points. It's a typical That's six beautiful. by six. Beautiful. Was that Ontario? Yeah. Yeah. I think it scored a 180 or something. But yeah. Well, anyway, Shane. Shane broke his leg up here. Well, I heard something about didn't. Uh... Shane, something was going on with his kidney, and he, you know, there was, <laughs> I think it's in that book there, you know, and he, he, doctor was like, you really got to get out and get on dialysis, like, right now, and he was like, no, it's deer season, I got to hunt. Yeah, well, he didn't anyway, so he didn't feel like, because he shot quite a ways away at the deer, and he was running, he yeah. had a, I hit it in this one. Yeah. Um, so I get there, and he goes, uh, boy, things got a hell of a rack on it, you were right. Um. He said, would you go get it for me? Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Land and I ran him right down. Lily ran the deer down. He couldn't go no more. He was three-legged. <laughs> well, he wanted you to go go, go get it for him. Cause... <laughs> yeah. Well, he liked to have done it himself. Yeah, yeah. I called him on. It was a mile away when we caught up with the deer. Finally got him. And I call him, I said, boy, this thing's got some fucking points on it. I can't remember, 21 <laughs> pointer, 18 points, I don't know. Yeah, man, something's got to be, I haven't hunted in a place where I can just walk and walk and walk without having to worry about running into something, so. See, that's what I liked about Ontario when I first went out there. You get away from the people like nothing. If you wanted to hunt around people, you could, but if you wanted to get away from them, you had endless country to go hunt. Nobody but you. Yeah. Or your crowd. Yeah. You can get away from people. Yeah. And they had good snow, right? Good snow yeah. out there. If you had good snow, you were going to shoot something decent. Um, if you wanted to sit, you were going to shoot something decent. You had to sit in the right spot. Shane was getting mad at me because people were paying to go hunting with us, and I was putting them in some good spots. God, they were shooting some nice deer. Like George E. Shaw, what the hell that thing score? A 192 rough score? Wow. Timmy's buddy hunting buddy? Yeah. Well, I knew something was up. I sent him down there. I said, boy, George, I said, uh, boy, there's a nice buck down there. I was just going to go down there and hunt myself, but you ain't have much luck, you go ahead. Well, some reason, I had to go somewhere, and I met him on the road. He's flying this way. He's looking for me is what he was doing. He stops behind me a hundred yards, gets out and runs back instead of backing up with his truck. <laughs> I said, what's up with that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I knew something was up. He comes running up. Oh, I shot this monster buck. I need a hand to go get it. I said, well, let's go. He was so excited. Yeah. Oh, geez. Well, I, yeah, when I got there, I said, well, I guess you did shoot a pretty good buck. A nice deer. I don't think I've seen that one. I'm trying to think if I've met George, too. I don't know. I don't remember. That nice box. Yeah. Well, you might as well end this thing. It's been two hours now. Oh! Well, I can go on the three if you don't <laughs> shut that off. Well, we can do it any, any time. And, you know, we're actually, we're close to each other. So anytime you want to talk, I mean, I've got this with me all the time. It's fun getting getting stories out there and stuff that people can, people can relate to it and learn from it or just dream about doing it someday. You know? Yeah. So, anytime you want to. I got some more hunting stories, I just have to remember them. And... <laughs>